few amounts to fill with a lot of exciting things going on as we get into the, the Easter holidays. Easter food baskets. One community church is providing an Easter meal for the same six local families we adopted at Christmas in partnership with Monroe City Schools. Is this a lot of is it a little loud? A little bit. I know I'm loud too. <laughs> the sign up form is in the fellowship hall. Bring your donations to the church office Monday through Thursday between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m., which is March 27th through the 30th, or on Sunday morning, April 2nd, before noon. We're quickly approaching Holy Week, and we have several opportunities for you to worship. Invite your friends and family to worship as well. Palm Sunday, 9.45 to 11 a.m. There's some exciting things going on with, it, with our children and youth that be involved in that service. Monday Thursday at 7 p.m., Good Friday at 7 p.m., and Easter Sunday we'll be having both services at 9.45 and 11 a.m. We, we want to invite all the kids to gather in the fellowship hall on Palm Sunday at 9.40 a.m. We're going to have a Palm Sunday parade at 9.45 a.m. service. After the parade, the kids will go downstairs with Miss Stacy for Sunday school. We also have a celebratory opening plan for 11 a.m. service as well. But it won't be the kids' Palm Sunday parade. Be there on time, kids, but it won't be in the parade. <laughs> <laughs> and if you desire to contribute to the ministries at one community church, there's a, a number of ways that you can, can give financially. We have a, an offering box in the back of the church, and, and you can put your offerings in there. You can mail it to the church, and you can also just go to the website of One Community Church. We have a wonderful ministry, but it, it does take financial help in order to have these ministries to serve God by serving others. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the privilege to preach your word to your people. And Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful that we can come before your throne of grace with confidence. Father, I'm so thankful that over the, the decades since I've been a believer, the peace of mind that you've given me in so many ways, that I know there's no other way I can have found it. So I thank you so much for that. Father, I thank you for your people who are here. Father, we lift up those who desire to be here today and could not make it. Father, help us to not only be hearers of your word, but more importantly, to be doers of your word. Of course, in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. This morning I'll be preaching from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. And as I, just, as I look over the decades that, that I've been saved, and oftentimes, you know, you talk with people, and I know for myself, I, I truly believe this. I don't know how people who don't know the Lord and who aren't walking with the Lord, I don't know how they make it through life. And have peace of mind. I just think of just the fact that, that the Lord saved me and, and saved my wife and saved so many of our, our all of our children and so many relatives. And by faith, I know that He's going to save all of our grandchildren. And just over, you just think that through your lifetime, you know, you, when you've gone to the doctor with someone or you've had a bad diagnosis, issues with, with your children, whether it's health wise. Or maybe just going opposite of the way they were raised. Financial situation. Just, just go on and on. I don't know how people make it and keep a sound mind without knowing the Lord. And I'm just so thankful that God saved me. And that I can think, I'm tripping at you, can think of nights where you just couldn't sleep because something was so heavy on your mind for yourself or someone else. And, and Sometimes I'll be too tired, I just pull the cover off my head, so I'll wake my wife up and I'll pray. Other times I'll get up in my closet and, and pray and just, it gives me peace of mind. God's Word gives me peace of mind. The Holy Spirit living in me, Jesus living in me. So I'm just so thankful. This morning I'm going to preach on the requirements for peace of mind. I, I love these verses, I use them often when I'm. Preaching at a funeral, I know that they give me peace of mind, and oftentimes I'll, I'll use this when I'm talking to people who've lost a loved one, or, or actually preaching this for, for funerals to help people have peace of mind. This is a powerful sermon. I, I, I 
picked this, this first verse. I think it's one of the most powerful verses in the Bible. Rejoice in the Lord always is required for peace of mind. The Apostle Paul was speaking to the church of Philippi and, and speaking to us today. And in verse 4 he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I would say it again, rejoice. There are so many powerful points in this first verse here in verse 4. When he starts out saying rejoice in the Greek Bible, he watches all the time. And now with social media, and it's so funny, oftentimes we watch television and something's going on right away. People pulling out those phones and getting on video. We can't be out there, I'm using more slang today, young people. We can't be out there acting a fool. It takes, it takes a lifetime for us to develop a godly reputation. One moment of indiscretion can destroy all that. So it's so important for us to stay prayed up and to display that gentleness and that, that mildness and it's required for us to have peace in mind. It's so important for us to not be judgmental. I was just talking with JoJo this morning and she was sharing with me of a, a situation where people at school were being judgmental. As believers, we should be the most forgiving, the most merciful, the most gracious people in the world. Thank God that God didn't judge me Amen. before I got saved. If he'd have looked at my record, you ain't worth being saved. <laughs> Praise God. And we need to be that way with other people also. The Apostle Paul goes on to say, command us to be gentle. And then he says, the Lord is near. I'm so thankful that the Lord is near. If y'all had saw me at home some kind of way, you'd think I was crazy. A lot of times, whether people were in the house or not, I'm, I'm talking to the Lord constantly. And a lot of times, I'm, you know, I'm able to get people around and, I'll, and just, I'll say, Lord, give me strength. Lord, give me patience. Lord, give me money. No, I don't say, Lord, give me money. <laughs> but I'm constantly in conversation with the Lord. I'm in, I'm in the car. I'm, I'm praying. If I'm not listening to sports talk radio, I'm praying. We need to have that relationship with God. He's near. He's just waiting for us to call on him. I know sometimes the Lord must say, I ain't talked to that one in a long time. Are they too busy? My son wasn't too busy to die on the cross for them. God is waiting for us. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be formal prayer. Just God knows our situations. The Lord is near. In Matthew 28, 20, Jesus says, and surely I am with you. Always to the very end of the age. The Lord is always with us. You know, God is so gracious. Sometimes we don't even pray. And he'll give us what we need anyway. That's true grace. Kids, can you imagine a parent that gives you what you need and you don't even ask for it? Yes, you can. That's, you're blessed. That's grace. You don't even have to ask for it. And they provide food. You don't have to ask for it. And they buy you tennis shoes. Might even get you the coolest ones that are out there now. You don't even ask for it sometimes. And they love you anyway. I'm so thankful that the Lord is always near and so gracious. Prayer is a requirement for peace of mind. In verse 6, the fourth command the Apostle Paul gives here, do not be anxious about everything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And that's a, that's a real tough one. In our society, there are so many people who suffer from anxiety. So many people do. I remember reading in an article, it was just saying that just more people in the history of pharmaceuticals need prescription medications to deal with, with anxiety and worry and, 
and just other issues in that regard than ever in the history of the world. And you know, I, you know, we have family members that, that deal with anxiety and, and have to take treatment for that. I know some of you do from, from us talking about it. And I know sometimes that you know people have chemical imbalances and other things, but I think there are some situations where if we just spend more time in prayer, we'd probably be a little less anxious. But it, it takes faith. And to pray with thanksgiving, when I pray, before God has even answered the prayer, and I said, Lord, I thank you for how you're going to answer that prayer for me. Remember, Hebrews 11, 6 says, it's impossible to please God without faith. And you know, and, and my wife and I were just talking about this this morning. You know, God will either say yes, no, or keep on praying. I'll let you know later. <laughs> but it's so important for us to be in prayer, to have peace of mind. And it'll help us to, to worry less. And, you know, nowadays, people don't have, have big families like they did back in the day. You know, I'm Lord willing it. I'll be 62 this year, and I'll be eligible for Social Security, but that's, that's another topic. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of the things I went to school with in, in the Catholic Church, it was nothing for people to have anywhere from 10 to 15 kids. There was one family that, that I went to school with, they, were, they had 13 kids and three sets of twins, and nobody in their family was shorter than 5'10". <laughs> Huge! But people, and like now, with us having Having six kids, I can remember when we when we would go into malls and stuff, and we would sign our older kids to keep up with the younger kids, and everyone was assigned a certain child <laughs> because you always got the ones who are hard and want to hide behind curtains and everything, so that way you won't have confusion. Well, I thought you had that. When well, I thought you had that, so everyone had an assignment. And I can remember that when we would be walking in malls, sometimes we would see people doing this. Remember that, Lord? I see people. They be counting. How many kids we had? And then asked us, are these all your kids? I said, yes, they are, and I'm claiming all of them on my income tax, too. <laughs> but just praise God for prayer. Praise God that we can, when we're going through difficult times with our children, we can pray. And remember, when you pray, pray with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for how you're going to answer this prayer. And Petition, be, be specific. Lord, can you, will you please answer this prayer? Lord, I, please, can you do this prayer? Be specific about what's going on. You know, you don't have to be embarrassed. God already knows anyway. He just wants you to disclose the information. <laughs> and then lastly, rejoice in the Lord always, and gentleness of prayer will give believers the peace of God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. When God has called you to do something, I promise you, I guarantee this, when the Lord has spoke to your heart, your soul, and your mind, and you tell some people, there will be people who will, who will be telling you, you shouldn't do that. It's going to be too hard. You're going to do what? You're going to quit your job and go into ministry? How will you make it? That's a guarantee that God called you to do. There's always people. Every time God has called me to do something, and I told someone about it, people, people would come in and try to discourage you from doing it. That's Satan. Even if it's a loved one, Satan is working through that person. Satan doesn't want you to be involved in ministry and teaching children, teaching adults, leading people to the Lord, helping people to grow spiritually. So you know you're going to have opposition. <clears throat> Always be ready for opposition when you're serving the Lord. When God speaks of peace, it's a tranquility. It's when you're not in spiritual conflict. All these commands that the Apostle Paul has given us will give us peace of mind. And I love this last verse here where it says, will guard your heart. 
In the Greek, it's, it's a military term. And I picture angels standing there with us. I was reading an old book by, by the Reverend Billy Graham about angels. And he shared that there was a missionary at an island. And he and his wife were there in a small hut in the jungle. And there was a tribe of people, and they were all circling where they were living at that hut. And they had swords, and they knew that they were there to kill them. They were angry because they were converting people in that tribe. And in the story, Billy Graham says the husband and the wife, who were both missionaries, were up praying all night. And they had fallen asleep. When they woke up in the morning, all the, the people in that tribe with those swords were gone. Sometime later, the, the leader of that tribe was led to the Lord by the same cup. And the husband asked him, you and your people have surrounded our hut and had swords. Why didn't you attack us and kill us? And the, the leader of the tribe said, there are huge men who are standing in front of the hut. And we were afraid. There were angels. There were angels protecting. They were guarding those people. And we follow these commands that the, that the Apostle Paul talks about. God will guard our hearts and our minds. We will have peace of mind. And I truly believe, and I pray this prayer every day, especially for my grandkids and our children, their parents. Those of you who are teachers, I pray that God has angels protecting our children and our grandchildren, guarding them. Because I know God has his heavenly host watching over and protecting us. That gives me peace of mind. You know, you think that, oh, I got my kids out of the house. They think I worry about your, kids, your, your grandkids and the great-grandkids. So I stay on my knees, but God will give us peace of mind. If we follow these requirements, these commands that the Apostle Paul has given us, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful for this letter from the Apostle Paul. Father, I pray that we have great faith. I pray, Father, that we would be rejoiceful. Father, I pray that we would be gentle people. Father, I pray that we would pray with thanksgiving. Father, I pray that we would let our request be made known to you. I thank you so much. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.